What it do y'all and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I am so excited to bring you guys another video in my Must Have Must Gag series. This is my series I created inspired by Samantha March's Will I Buy It series. I also have her series and the community playlist linked down below as well as all the Instagram pages I follow to get all of this makeup knowledge. If you see an asterisk behind down below in the affiliated links, that means that it's affiliated. If you shop through it, I very much appreciate it. Otherwise, no big deal at all. I'm just truly happy that you're here to talk makeup with me. It doesn't happen very often lately, but I'm still happy every time I'm able to sit down here and talk to you guys about makeup, beauty, whatever it is for the day. I will, of course, be filming this I tutorial and of course full face throughout this video per usual so just sit back and enjoy and yeah I'm not gonna do a long intro let's just get into it now I'm not gonna lie you know my obsession with makeup has definitely drawn back a little bit which i think in the grand scheme of things is good i'm getting use out of the products that i already have i have time to prioritize other things but i still do enjoy talking about makeup applying makeup etc and so that's what we're going to be doing today we're going to be doing some basic betty type stuff i'm a tinge bit rusty it has been a tinge of a time before since i have actually filmed so hopefully we get this in kind of a decently one take um but i'm gonna take a drink i need to wet my sponge and then we're gonna dive into all of this new makeup that i haven't even taken the time to look at because i just pinned it right now as always i'm scooting over all of the items will be on the screen um and everything that i use to put on my makeup throughout this video of course will be listed and linked down below if not in the description box definitely in a pinned comment so first things first by rado is coming out with a new palette and what seems to be kind of a secondary product, so more or less a collection. And this is their Mineral Scapes collection with the Mineral Scape eyeshadow palette and then a lip vinyl. So, I mean, this looks very, very neutral. I see great kind of compliments and really great love for certain Byredo products depending on the color scheme and depending on the youtubers vibes i definitely think that this palette overall works for you know great eyeshadow looks that said it is 115 dollars and that just doesn't seem reasonable for me right now it just doesn't seem under i just no nothing about that is really making me intrigued enough to pick that up so i'm gonna go ahead and skip something that i think a lot of people are going to be really excited about is a new product from ysl and these are their candy glow tinted butter bombs now i want to say last week i finally uploaded at least the part one of me comparing lip oils lip balms and lip um what is it mask that i have tried out in my collection a variety of different kind of formulations consistencies all of that i'm not going to go into that video but if you're interested i'll do my best to either link it down below or in the cards but i would try to link it somewhere for you to like have easy access to it and i was talking about one of the products that i have from ysl and it's a lip product and it is they consider a lip bomb i want to say but now they're con they're coming out with a new formula which are called the butter bombs so i think they're coming out with this formula now one because bomb type products and lip oil type products are very popular so that naming is just going to be a lot more catchy and this is the time even though yes they have a bomb type product i think just a lot of people don't associate that product with the name bomb so they're not necessarily getting the traction that they could outside of like potentially now coming out with this product now if that makes any sense so I definitely think this is smart for the brand. I'm sure this is gonna be great. I actually really love the Candy Glaze. It's like a Candy Glaze lip balm. It's the one that everybody has, you know? So I definitely understand why they're doing this. And you know, if this was available during the VIB sale, I probably would have picked this up just to, you know, try it out at a very discounted rate because nobody wants to pay full prices for something like this. But 
like, you know, it wasn't. Or if it was, I just wasn't paying attention. I think these look nice. I may pick them up when they go on sale. Otherwise, I'm good. Charlotte Tilbury is now trying to diversify her range. It's very interesting seeing that she is now coming out with perfumes. And from what I can tell, the reaction of a lot of the community that I follow. Now, like I've been saying, I have been so busy that like I have not had the time to really watch the YouTubers that typically I used to watch a lot when it comes to makeup. So I don't really know kind of the consensus, if you will, on like how people are feeling about this. But from the thumbnails, I feel like a lot of people are really not loving the concept that Charlotte Tilbury is diversifying in this way. And it's very interesting that she's getting this type of feedback when she's not the only makeup brand that of course came out with skincare and then also came out with some form of like perfume or scented product. I think it's just the fact that her brand has been around for so much longer than a lot of the brands that did that and she's just not really well known for scent. The brand that keeps coming to my brain every time I kind of think about this particular issue with this particular launch is Fenty. So Rihanna, previously to even coming out with Fenty Beauty, people used to talk about how good she smelled in person, which is why one of the By Killian perfumes got so popular, which is love, by the way, in case you did not know. So that, I think the association between Rihanna, Fenty, there's like a hair, Rihanna, Fenty, and then Fenty Perfume, I don't think anybody kind of fluffed up any feathers because of that. But I've literally never heard anybody talk about how good Charlotte Tilbury smells or how she always wears perfume or whatever kind of combination of those words you want to say. And so I think that's why so many people are kind of like side eyeing this release. At this point, we're just in the day and age where a lot of brands are just gonna be diversifying so that they can continue to bring in the capital no matter what people are kind of purchasing, even me, right? So there were so many times throughout the years that I have been kind of in love with makeup where I have bought anything from a favorite brand. But as I'm sure you guys are feeling, and I think honestly the whole community as a whole is feeling, we're kind of bored. We're kind of tired. You're not really getting a lot of really new, unique releases, new textures, new formulas. So you're starting to kind of potentially not buy as much makeup, maybe even getting gaining more hobbies or different hobbies. If you are growing older like I am, I'm now 30. So of course my hobbies are slightly changing as, you know, I change and all of that jazz. I feel like once you hit your 30s, everybody wants to be in love with plants and I am no different. So it's like they're trying to keep their audience in whatever fashion they can. If at that moment they're into fragrance, well, Charlotte Tilbury has fragrance. If in that moment they're into skincare, well, Charlotte Tilbury has skincare. If in that moment they're obsessed with makeup, Charlotte Tilbury has makeup. And I think we're gonna just keep seeing brands expanding and expanding and expanding. You see that also at like Makeup Revolution. I mean, say what you will about the brand. First of all, they, they do a lot, but also they have skincare range, they have makeup ranges, they have hair care ranges, and it's not just one range. The brand is a conglomerate, I feel like at this point when it comes to beauty, and it's because of the fact that they wanna make sure whatever their particular audience is into at that moment, whatever their particular audience needs at that moment, they know they can go to Makeup Revolution to pick it up. And you know, at the end of the day, we're at a point in, you know, societies overall, not just any one society, where people are really paying attention to how they're spending their money because it's getting real out here. And so that's why you continue to see all these brands diversifying and changing their, you know, their aesthetics and like, you know, expanding their ranges. And honestly, there was a point in my life where I was hating it. I was like, no, stay in your lane, stay in your lane. And don't get me wrong, to an extent, I still feel that way. But now, even as a consumer, I understand why the brand is doing it. Now, whether I'll support that, that is a completely different thing, but I understand it now. And that's the difference from, you know, a couple of years ago.
my base is looking really, really good. I'm really happy with this. Okay, so next item is from Danessa Myricks. I wanna say the last time I did this video, I talked about Danessa Myricks's volume two of her Groundwork palette, and now she's coming out with yet another new product. And this one is similar to her Yummy Skin blushes, but now these are highlighters, and she's calling these low lighters. I think this is genius. She's had cream highlighters in her range prior and she has them in kind of two different formulations so she had them in the color fix formula which if you don't know is like a very very high concentrated color um and so some of them were shiny and so people would use those as like a highlighter type product on their face she also had them in like a pump and then she also had them in like a do in the do something formula that's the formula i tried i actually liked that formula but i didn't get a lot of use out of it and it was super old so i recently decluttered that i want to say this previous declutter series um but i think this is going to be the form of highlighter that so many other people are not only going to try but actually understand how to use and then continue to fall in love with the Nessa Myricks. Not only because of the association of the name or the line, which is Yummy Skin, this range has just been very much loved by, you know, the whole beauty community. So it makes complete sense why she is continuing to push that momentum with this particular range. You have her skin tint, you have her blushes and now these highlighters and she also has the primer which a lot of people love even with a huge range of skin types so i love this for her and i would love to try this i really would this would be something that i would actively go out of my way to pick up as of right now you know i don't think that that's going to be something that i'm rushing to it is available at sephora and beautylish um so who knows maybe in the future i will pick it up through one of those places the key though for me is what the color tone I'm gonna be picking up. I'd probably pick up the shade Low Key. That's just a tone of highlighter that I prefer. I prefer a more pinky warm tone than like a goldier tone, especially based on the gold that I see here. It does look like more of a orangey gold, but that line between orangey gold and just straight up gold is very, very hair thin. And I really don't like straight up gold highlighters on my skin tone. I know for my skin tone, a lot of people would put those types of colors, but it's just not a preferred tone that I like. So yeah, very, very excited to see that this was something that was released. And you know, I, I love to see it. I really do, especially from Danessa. So we're seeing something coming from Benefit and they're coming out with a splash tint and a plush tint. This makes sense. So these are just tinted lip products. I mean, this is something that has been going on in K-Beauty and J-Beauty for probably decades, it, easily years, okay? This type of product has been available. I have quite a few from YesStyle. And if I my memory serves me correctly, next month is actually Asian Pacific Islander Month in the US. So I will I will be doing a couple of videos where I hopefully will be featuring some Asian owned brands or just Asian owned locations that you can get, you know, a bunch of Asian owned products. Am I making sense? Probably not. Either way, this is not like, you know, them recreating the wheel here. They're just bringing it to the US. We tend to be very slow when it comes to this type of stuff. So it makes perfect sense. I don't see anything that I really, really need. I will say now that this is coming to the US and based on the general color schemes that the US likes to wear in makeup, I'm excited and interested to see if there's going to be some more neutral toned stains. I understand the concept of the stain is for you to have like, you know, the popsicle kind of color for you to have some color, but it to look, you know, matte, but not feel matte or whatever. I get that cold concept. I really, really do. But I would still love like a more neutral toned tint and I haven't found one yet but I think now that 
U.S. brands are starting to get into this trend, there might be one established or created that is at least a little bit more neutral than what I found. But I have found some options and I aim to show them next month. Blend Bunny Cosmetics is coming out with a collection and I'm actually really excited for this collection basically because I feel like this is showing how popular the brand is and I love that for this brand. So this is a collaboration that they're doing with they don't have the name of the influencer on here I think it's Ellis I think that's their name so I'm really excited to see this personally just because of the fact that once a brand starts doing collaborations like this, like I said, that just means that they are really popular. They're getting the recognition that they deserve. And from what I have tried from Blim Bunny, I definitely think that they deserve recognition, but also just the opportunity to continue to expand their audience and who knows about them. So I love this. I think collaborations are a really good way for a brand to get their name out there because there are people who know about Ellis and their artistic talent. I don't know um, where they are kind of known and where they post, but I'm sure they're somebody um, that has an audience, which is always good. And now their audience can potentially be exposed to Blend Bunny, potentially for the first time, or maybe they'll feel more convinced to pick something up because they really want to support Ellis. So I really like this. I really do. There's a very big eyeshadow palette. It's quite neutral with, you know, the whole range of neutrals and colors. It's a lot of colors in there. There are two blush palettes. There's a highlighter, and I think there's one other item. There's lash clusters. This is not something that I think I'm gonna be picking up from, but like I said, I'm gonna to continue to just be happy for the brand and for the collaborator and just recognize the fact that it takes a lot of work to collaborate, it takes a lot of work to kind of build that bond with a brand and I'm just happy for them that they were able to find it in each other to kind of go this next step to do this. I really like them. Congratulations to both of them. Keep up the good work, I guess. I don't know. Keeping it going, we have some new products that dropped from About Face. Now these, the packaging looks really, really interesting. And I wonder if the packaging is telling the full story. So these are the Energy Angels collection. And these have a plethora of holographic eye paints and fractal eye paint along with lip light highlighter fluids and lashes now i've tried their highlighter their their light lock highlighter it was in the cream formula not a liquid and i actually did enjoy the product was it a favorite not so much but i enjoyed it and that's a lot coming from me because quite a few products that are in that type of packaging I just don't like I don't like at all so I did actually like that and historically I have enjoyed their paints as well so really interested in this I mean the colors look really really pretty is there anything groundbreaking once again here unfortunately I don't think so once again something I think I could be tempted to do is try the highlighter liquid that is a formula tangent product that I enjoyed the kind of original version so I would be interested in potentially trying you know this more newer more liquidy version I am not a huge fan of liquid highlighters historically and normally but I try it I really would I probably pick it up from Ulta in the event that you know it's not for me or even if I can find it in store that's even better because then if I swatch it and I know the formula is not going to be something that I try, I don't need to pick it up. I don't need to waste the physical product. So that's kind of my thought process there with that particular item. Just trying it, testing it out. 
we'll see where I go in the future. As for the holographic kind of eye paint, although they look beautiful and I'm sure so many people have given them reviews and tested them out and tried them, I'm probably going to pass just for the sheer fact that I don't use a lot of eye paints, one, and then two, I don't really do a lot with my holographic shadows that I already have, so no need to bring any more products in. So since I've been away, Pat McGrath have added new colors to her blush sticks, and I think this is smart. I think it makes perfect sense. I'll be really interested to see when she begins to add more formulas, not only just the stick colors, but actually adding ones that are like more luminous to this balm range. I think that'll be really interesting and hopefully received very well. I know some people really love the formula, some people hated them, but I think adding that layer will kind of rival potentially these LYS cream sticks, which a lot of people love, me included. They just really give you a nice amount of pigment and they dry down even if you don't want to powder on top like I traditionally do. I just like doing that but you don't have to and that is the positive on that. So yeah I'll be interested to see when Pat McGrath can kind of make that additional step but until then she just came out with some new shades and yeah I'm probably not going to pick any of those up. I've been really good when it comes to ignoring Pat McGrath's sales and she's had some sales but like I said I mean at this point if it's not something new I just don't know why I would need to bring it into my collection. Kiko Milano this time is coming out with a collaboration with Bridgerton and I don't know how to feel. So they have a blush palette where there's a blush and a highlighter. There are two lipsticks, there are two quads, and I think some other skincare maybe perhaps. Let's see, what are those? Oh no, they're cream eyeshadows, a liner, and some other things. I really don't know how to feel. I don't know how to feel. I read uh, a little while ago, I said that I was going to try Kiko Milano because they did a collaboration with um, Little Mermaid. And that was the version that had the black girl starring. I don't remember her name at all. I can see her face, but I don't remember her name. Um, and I never ended up picking that up. I never ended up picking it up. And this one, I'm like, I could... I could see me picking it up. I could see me reviewing it. Do you want me to? I'm sure it's not going to be very expensive at all. It's going to be available starting the 24th. So it should already be available different countries and it's going to be on Nordstrom's website. Are you interested in seeing this from me? This is going to be, I'm going to do like a poll. Can I do a poll in the middle of a video or do I need to do that on a community post? I'm going to do a poll. I need to know if you guys want me to do this because if you do, I need to hop on it ASAP. Otherwise, you know, it's not going to be necessarily relevant. Let me know down below. Amy Loves Makeup is doing a collaboration with Adept and in this collaboration... I'm very hopeful that this collaboration is going to have a better outcome than her previous one for her. Um, the eyeshadow palette is consisting of neutrals that are pretty cool tone and then also a very warm tone blush palette. I think that the collection as a whole looks really pretty. It makes sense for her as, you know, an influencer. I'm not a huge fan of cool tones and... Honestly, the blush palette, although it looks pretty, it doesn't look like anything that will be super, super unique for me. And like I said, I follow Amy. I very much appreciate her content, all that jazz. Um, but I think, unfortunately, I'm just going to go ahead and have to pass on this one. It's just not really pulling my heartstrings. Fenty Beauty is coming out with yet another base product they have quite the range of base products it's it's starting to get like a lot i get it you want to be accessible and have a product skin wise for everybody but it's just it's a lot it's a lot this time once again the packaging looks very similar to her original 
foundation and this one is the soft lit foundation so this is supposed to have a golden hour magic to give you naturally luminous foundation it makes sense i get it it's just it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot it's definitely something that I can see myself trying in the future, but I already have like two or three Fenty foundations that I am interested in trying based on the finishes. So I just don't see how this is bringing anything new to her range and kind of enticing her audience to potentially pick it up. That's the part that I'm not personally understanding and not really getting, I guess, the full picture on. So yeah, I don't really know. I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know what to say when it comes to this one. Um, not something for me, at least not right now. I just don't need it. I'm not interested. So I'm not going to buy it. I'm not really done with my eye makeup, but I just had to kind of hop off for a little while, do some things, and I will come back um, at the very end with my face done. I just was blabbing on so much that I didn't get through as much in the meantime that I expected to. Kayali is coming out with a new scent and this is the Vanilla Sugar Rock Candy. I want to say that this is bringing back her um, wedding scent but in a different name. I don't really know but I'm excited I love it. I really enjoy the brand. I believe I'm like a couple of cents behind on buying them, but that's just because I, just, you guys just saw my perfume collection. I have a lot of scents, and so I just don't need to buy everything, even though Kayali is one of my favorite brands overall. And I still need to get a full size of my Yum Pistachio. I finished my travel, never got the full size because I was waiting to get it on sale. Regardless, though, it is definitely a brand I will probably end up picking up some of these more kind of offbeat ones that I haven't picked up to try. And this is definitely one of them. Lana Combe is coming out with a range of bronzers. For once, I feel like this is actually a decent range. Granted, in the picture, I mean, it doesn't really get too, too deep, but it feels like they tried. So I guess I'll give it to them for that. But yeah, I don't feel like the dark model that they have on screen actually has any bronzer on. So let that be the test for you. Glow Recipe is coming out with something else in their watermelon range. And this one is their Niacinamide Dew Balm Skin Sunscreen Stick. I think this is genius. I actually just finished a sunscreen tint stick. I loved it. I even got it from my mom. My mom was raving for it and she does not really enjoy putting on skin care at all. So I've slowly gotten her into skincare lately and that is one of those products that she actually enjoys putting on because it's so easy. You just swipe it on, rub it in a little bit and you're good to go. And especially if you're trying to do something on the go, reapply throughout the day, those types of formulations are just great. I'm sure a lot of people are going to try this formula just because of the association with the range and all of that jazz. Power to them. I'm probably going to stick with quite a few of the, skin, the sunscreens that I already have because I do have a plethora but I will potentially see some reviews on this one. It seems as though Hourglass is dropping some more face palettes. I told you guys last year and I'm sticking to it. I'm no longer participating in this Shiraz of buying a palette, thinking it's gonna work on my skin tone and it doesn't. So this is gonna be an easy skip for me. And there is that. MAC is coming out with some new products and these are for your brows. So one is the Locked Brow Gel for $24 and the other one is a brow pencil. I feel like MAC should come out with a really good formula in both of these. Whether it's something that I'm going to actively pick up though is another story. I do really love a nice hold. Right now, the one that I'm using and I'm pretty much done with it is the Patrick Ta Brow Gel. I'm pretty much down to the wire. I'm just kind of begging and pleading for enough gel to come out of it, but I need to retire it and move on to the next one. Um, it did give me a nice hold. There were some things I didn't like about it, but overall the application and the actual longevity on my face, 
great. Okay, just a handful of products left. Glossier is coming out with another tint and scent in their bomb.com. They do have the new kind of doe foot applicator. It's not a doe foot, but the applicator for the lip section. I think that's really smart of them. I have a dot com somewhere but it's the old packaging and it's pretty much Vaseline to me. So it's not something that I'm going to rush to pick up. Not a preferred texture when it comes to a balm for me. And once again, if you're interested, check out that most recent video where I kind of compared all of those products. NYX is adding to their butter melt range with blushes. This makes sense. Every couple of years, NYX comes out with a new range, more or less the same colors, just keeping that situation up to date. I still haven't tried the bronzer, so I probably won't trust try the blush anytime soon, but I'm sure it is a beautiful formula. I do feel like I've heard some really good things. Another recent foundation product is coming from Natasha Denona, and this is the High Glam Powder. I believe she came out, she came out with something in this range. Was it, oh, it was the concealer. It was the concealer and a lot of people really liked it. So I can definitely understand why they would come out with a powder foundation in that range. I want to say people were actually using that concealer more or less as a foundation. They would just kind of put uh, spot conceal and so having this to kind of go over your whole face just to kind of keep that situation in check makes perfect sense uh, I never tried the concealer because I don't really go through concealers very quickly and it's just not reasonable for me to pick up any additional but yeah I'm gonna wait and see the reviews from others okay so the last product that I want to talk about and then I've got to go okay is the elf cosmetics bronzing drops is the elf cosmetics bronzing drops this feels like they're trying to kind of dupe the drunk elephant bronzing drops makes complete sense and this is supposed to give your skin a sun-kissed glow so this is more of like a liquid tinted moisturizer but more bronzy in effect it makes perfect sense color um it makes perfect sense. Elf has really been making a name for themselves doing this for the last couple of years. So I understand why they're doing it again. Is this something I'm going to be picking up? No, I don't need bronzing drops. So there is that. Although I'm sure it would look really good on my skin. I just, I don't need them. So not going to get them. So yeah, let me finish up this makeup look because there's definitely some pieces missing and then we will come back to wrap this video up. Alrighty guys, so this is the finished look and honestly, I think it looks really, really nice. Off camera, I put on my eyeliner, uh, which is just my normal LA girl. I put on my lashes, which I was gonna try a new style, but honestly, I just don't have it in me to trim another set of lashes. These are just my Egypt's uh, normal. And I also did try two new products that were sent to me Full disclosure, they will be linked and listed down below. Eventually you guys will get a review, so do not worry. But yeah, I'm really enjoying the look. I think it looks really nice. I might need to do another video because I was gonna just kind of be done for the night. I do need to get this video up like pronto because I really wanna get this video up today, which is Friday. But I might need to film something really, really quickly and then just really power through to do a quick editing session, if that makes sense. But yeah, with that said, nothing really crazy this week that I feel like I must have. But, you know, that might just be me being kind of out of obsession mode when it comes to makeup and more in love mode. I would love to hear down below your opinions. And with that said, I will see you guys in my next video, which hopefully will be very, very soon. Bye, guys.